For today's video lesson, you should have your close reader booklet with you, open to page 77. You should have something to write with and some highlighters. So let's start with this background here for this article. This article is called Teenagers and New Technology. So this background reads, the world's first text message was sent on December 3rd, 1992. Neil Popworth sent the message, Merry Christmas, from his personal computer to the phone of Richard Jarvis. Isn't that funny? His last name is Jarvis, which is the same name for the artificial intelligence that runs Iron Man's suits. Technology has come quite a long way since then. The social networking site Facebook has over 1 billion active users. 2.4 billion people around the world use text messaging as a means of communication, and 30.2% of the world's population now use the internet. Maybe it's important to ask, what are the effects of our obsession with new technology. So, and the word obsession here uh, means that you're totally fixated on it. You just can't stop thinking about new technology. So right now I want you to write underneath the word obsession. I want you to underline the word obsession and write can't stop thinking about it underneath it. You'll need to do these things that I say in order to get full uh, credit on this work. Now let's take a look at this article. We see by the title here, it's called Teenagers and New Technology. So it's gonna be talking about people your age and how they interact with new technology. Um, it's a magazine article by Andres Padilla Lopez. All right, so uh, this guy wrote this article and it was in a magazine. Now it's in our book, all right? And let's take a, a quick scan of what it is. Notice that magazine articles actually have these subtitles here that tell us what the next section is gonna be about. So this says, teenage use of electronic devices. Um, and then we scroll through, facts and figures. It's gonna give us some hard information here. We go through, uh, we see some graphs we'll talk about. Uh, whenever you see a quote like this, this isn't a separate quote. This quote is actually in the article that we're reading. But uh, the publisher thought it was so important, they decided to make it big and make it a kind of a picture uh, to represent what this article is talking about. This sub subheading is called the pros and cons. So pros means good, cons mean bad. Scrolling down, we see that uh, there are sections where, where we're gonna be doing some writing. And then it looks like it's over at line 71. So it's a short article, it's not that long. All right, so um, go ahead and scrolling back to the top, you guys will be flipping your pages over to the beginning of the article. So as we do this assignment, in order to get full credit, uh, you're gonna have to watch this video and uh, the, the next videos that will be a part of this one. You'll also have to be uh, marking up your text uh, in your close reader book. You're able to write in this book. It's just yours. Nobody else is gonna uh, reuse it in the future. Um, so in order to get full credit, you'll have to show me the work that you've been doing in your close reader uh, by doing the things that the, uh, the close reader is telling you to do uh, underlining things and writing in the margins. And I'll point these out as we go. So uh, first let's look at uh, number one. It says, as you read lines one through 23, begin to collect and cite text evidence. So uh, this is how you're gonna be kind of uh, highlighting and interacting with the text. I want you to underline examples of technology overuse. So in the article, when you come across an example of, hey, this is, this is a time that people use technology way too much, I want you to underline it. All right now in the margin and the margin is the white area to the right or to the left of your page summarize the cause and effect relationship found in lines six through ten so we'll focus on that when we get down there and it says in the margin write what the author is seeking to determine by asking questions and this is for lines 16 through 23 so this is part one of the reading which we'll be going through in this video so let's go ahead and start um, by uh, having the nice lady read to us um, what this, uh, uh, read this article to us. Teenagers and New Technology. Magazine article by Andres Padilla Lopez. Teenage use of electronic devices. Allison, 
A 15-year-old teenager from Redwood City, California, receives more than 27,000 text messages a month. Boom. So already you should be underlining this line right here. This chick receives 27,000 text messages a month. So that is a technology overuse. So underline that. Month. This averages out to about 900 texts per day. Allison explains, I text while I'm doing like everything. I need to answer that text. I need to know who's talking to me to know what they're going to say. Another teenager, also from Redwood City, spends six to seven hours a day playing video games. He admits that his game playing has interfered with his grades, but he argues that video games give me a shot of energy, and playing just makes me happy. I can't stop playing them. I don't want to stop playing them. So uh, you should have also underlined some examples of technology overuse in this paragraph. I'm not going to point out every single thing you need to underline. You're going to have to do it on your own. So let's stop here because I remember that uh, this next part says for lines 6 through 10, and that's what we just read. It says, summarize the cause and effect relationship found in lines 6 through 10. So lines 6 through 10 is this paragraph right here talking about this teenager in Redwood City. All right? um, he says that, well, he admits that video games have interfered with his grades. But he argues that video games give me a shot of energy, and playing just makes me happy. I can't stop playing them. I don't want to stop playing them. So what you're supposed to do is summarize the cause and effect relationship here in the margins. So you're going to write out one sentence that tells me what um, is the cause and what is the effect being pointed out in this paragraph. So for example, one cause is playing video games. That's something that is causing an effect to happen. And the effect is uh, his grades are suffering. So write a sentence over here telling me what the cause and effect relationship uh, is that is being discussed in this paragraph. This should sound something along the lines of um, because he plays video games and then finish the sentence. So once you've done that, let's go ahead and continue with the article. Yeah. In an interview with a British reporter, one teenager said, with feeling, I'd rather give up a kidney than my phone. Another told the same reporter that she spends over an hour on school days and about double that time on weekends. Hanging out with uh, some 450 Facebook friends. So uh, let's go ahead and finish uh, this section with this last paragraph. So how do you use electronic devices? Are your Facebook friends the same as your real-life friends, or do they include people you've never met? Are the friends you've never met more interesting than your real-life friends? Do you feel lost without your cell phone? Must you answer every text message immediately? Are you itching to get out of class to play video games? Or perhaps you worry about the amount of time you spend on your electronic devices. Maybe you think that texting and Facebook are a waste of time. So uh, the article started uh, by uh, introducing three teenagers and how they use technology and how it affects their lives. Then it ends with this paragraph kind of asking some questions, making you, the reader, kind of think about how you use electronic devices. So let's come up here to this last thing we had to do. It says, in the margin, write what the author is seeking to determine by asking the questions in lines 16 through 23. So here, right here in the margins on page 78, you're going to write, what do you think the author is seeking to determine, right? Or, or what are they making you um, aware of? What are they making you think about? What's the, the, the main question that they're trying to have answered uh, here um, by uh, saying all these questions here? You can probably summarize it with one question, all right? So go ahead and write that one question right here uh, in the margin to determine what the uh, author is trying to determine by asking all these questions. And I'll give you a hint. It may be one question that's already in here. Maybe you think what is the most important question, or it may even be the question that was the last sentence in the background that we read. So now before we go on to the next section, let's take a look at question number two. It says reread lines one through 15. Those are the first three paragraphs. 
what are the similarities of the structure of each of the first three paragraphs? Support your response with explicit textual evidence. Explicit means specific textual evidence. So as I go back up here and look at these first three paragraphs, I know each one talks about a teenager and each paragraph talks about how the teenager interacts with technology. So what I'm gonna write here is, um, write the similarities of the structure or um, what they're talking about in each one of those first three paragraphs. And then I'm actually going to quote um, with some textual evidence, actually write down, well, in paragraph one, it said, uh, you know, where the teenager was from and they gave a quote of the teenager actually talking about how technology affects them. That would show me that each one of those paragraphs were written in the same way or have a similar structure. So go ahead and pause and take a moment to answer question two right here.